made a paper fortune teller? You know, one of these? With your friends? It's a basic piece of origami. You just take a piece of paper, you make it into a square, and then you fold all the corners in. Next, you flip it over, fold the corners the other way, and then you have a little movable fortune teller. You can put some colours on the outside, so when you play the game, someone selects a colour, and then you put numbers on the inside and write fortunes underneath. The fun bit is to personalise your fortunes for your friends. Ta-da! Pick a colour. Pick a number. You have a secret admirer. It seems like a lot of effort to go to. Maybe there's a way I can do it with a computer. Let's program a paper fortune teller using Python 3 and Raspberry Pi. Really, I guess it's not a paper fortune teller anymore, because now it's a computerised fortune teller. But hey, you know, whatever. What you're going to need for this tutorial is you're going to need to install Python. And you can get this for different platforms. And if you go to this website called codingclub.co.uk, you will find on the downloads page, there are some installers. There is one for Windows, there's one for Mac, and there's one for Linux. Download this and install this onto your computer. Or alternatively, if you have a Raspberry Pi, you could just use your Raspberry Pi because it already comes installed on it. And if you're not sure how to um, use your Raspberry Pi or um, make an image, then watch this video and it will explain how. I'm using my Raspberry Pi to do my programming. And once you've logged into the desktop, you can go ahead and open the Python interpreter. At the moment, Python is in a kind of interactive mode, so I can type my code directly in here and it will run it straight away, which is not what we want. We want to be able to write a kind of text file and then get Python to run that afterwards. So the first thing you need to do is click File and New Window. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this new window um, as my Python script. So we need to go to File, Save As, and give it a name and save it in our Documents folder. remind myself of what I'm doing in certain parts of my code, what I like to do is um, label it by using comments. So if we start by using the hash key, anything I write after this, um, the script will ignore. And it's just to remind myself of what I've done. Next I'm going to import a Python module called random. So I just type import random. This is good for us because it means we haven't got to write a little program to do what we want it to do later on. Someone's already written it for us, so we're just borrowing their piece of code and importing it into our script. The other module we're going to need is called time. And both of these are going to be used later on in our code, but we're just putting them at the top just to keep our code tidy. Right, the next part we need is a print function. And what this function is going to do is it's going to display on the screen Welcome to the Geek Girl Diaries Fortune Teller. And then the slash n is going to um, return so that there's a blank space underneath it. You must put anything that's going to be um, text inside speech marks. Next I want to get the user to add some functionality. I want them to start the program. So I'm going to write question equals input because I want input from my user and I want to display it on the screen would you like me to tell you your fortune and then I'm going to do my slash in and close my bracket here I want to add my pause as if my program is thinking about it so I'm going to use my module that I imported and I'm going to make it kind of think about it for about two seconds. So the two inside the brackets is the seconds I could change it to three or four, so on. Now I need to write in all my fortunes, and I'm going to write this as a list. So I'm going to name my list, and then I'm going to use a square bracket, and then I can start typing in using um, apostrophes my answers. So my first fortune could be, you are a winner. And then if I separate that using a comma, I can put my next one in.
and so on. Now it's starting to get messy already because I'm having quite long items inside my list. Um, lists can go over several lines, so don't worry about keeping it all in one line, but it must be within the square brackets. So I'm just going to move this down so it looks a little bit neater, so I can see where all my commas are and I'm putting them all in correctly. So think of all your fortunes, all the things that would be in your fortune teller, and we're going to type them in. You can see here where I've started to type and I've started to use um, an apostrophe to punctuate my words that the colour of the text has changed and that's to tell you that you're actually doing something wrong. You can't use apostrophes for items inside the list because it's thinking that that is an item that you've opened and closed the item. So what you need to do if you want to use punctuation because we want to use all our good literacy skills is we need to put a slash in front of the character you want it to ignore. Once you're happy with all your fortunes, they're all punctuated in the way you want, you've put your backslash in to stop any problems with apostrophes and you've closed your list with a square bracket. The next thing that we need to do is we need to tell the program to run the module that we imported, the random module, to pick something randomly from the list. And then we want to display that onto the screen, we want to display the fortune so the person using the program can read the fortune. So we need to have a print function, obviously, because we want to print it to the screen. We're going to use our module to make a choice from our fortunes. Okay. And so the next thing to do is to save this. So file save. And then we're going to run it to test that it works. I'm going to run my module. Okay, welcome to the Geek Girl Diaries Fortune Teller. Would you like me to tell you your fortune? Yes, very much so. And it's going to wait a few seconds. Oh, my fortune. If you get a Raspberry Pi, the Geek Gods will smile on you. Yes! At this point, our program has only got as far as kind of finding us a fortune, randomly selecting one and then telling us our fortune. But it's missing out the whole beginning part. So maybe I need to think about how I'm going to add that kind of functionality to my program. How can I get the user to input a colour that will then lead to the program finding a fortune randomly? I've added two lines of extra code, as you can see on the screen, and what this is doing is asking the user to input a colour. And then the program will print, your colour choice is important, and I will now select your fortune based on your choice, or your selection of, and then I've added colour at the end. And what it will do is it will print that sentence and then it will add the colour that the person has written in. Can you see a problem with this piece of code? That's a little test for you. If you think you can, then perhaps you could add it to the comments down below. Right, so now what I'm going to do is test it. So I need to save it and then run program. Ta-da! I have my working computerized fortune teller. So now what it does is um, it asks the user for a colour just like we would do with this game. Um, but after that, normally when we play this game, you select a colour and then you count out the number of letters in the colour. So if it was green it would be G, R, E, E, N. And we haven't got that functionality in our program yet. So maybe as a little homework task, you might be able to think of ways that we could do that and you could post your ideas in the comments below this video and then we could test them and see if they work. For those of you who submit a piece of code or an idea for this, you may win your very own Geek Girl glasses. Why wouldn't you want to enter such a great competition? If you're keen to learn more about Raspberry Pi or setting up a Raspberry Pi or the basics of programming using Python or Scratch, then I would definitely recommend the channel Raspberry Pi for Beginners. I hope you enjoyed our little introduction to Python programming uh, using the Raspberry Pi a little bit as well. My name is Carrie Ann Philbin. Remember to subscribe if you liked what you see. Please interact with us using the comments or on Twitter. Remember, I'm just a mouse click away. Thank you.